Right, everyone, we are, we're here at the uh, uh, India Global Forum. Remember, you can send us your questions, any thoughts you have, you want to discuss any of the things that are happening, do join the conversation. It's hashtag IGF London. And what we are now going to turn our attention to is a little bit about how is artificial intelligence going to be affecting the workplace? What is it going to do for careers? What is it going to do to our jobs? How many jobs are going to take away? How many jobs are going to add? What are the skills that you require? Who should be worried and who should not be worried? And it's uh, absolutely fantastic to have with us uh, Kubilakshmi Krishnamurthy, who's global head, Zoho for startups. Uh, at the, uh, you know, Zoho, of course, been doing a lot of, a lot of work in the entire area. So great to have your sense on this. And Ashton Convoy is a senior program director, Wilson. Park, um, you know, been advising governments and also on the policies that they should be following. Um, when you're looking at AI and the evolution of careers, can I first just start before we get into the details of a big bird's eye view? Sure. Because when it comes to AI and how it's going to affect the workplace, I, you can go from this end of the spectrum to the other. It's going to be a fantastic and all the boring, dirty work is going to be done by AI and humans will do all the great work all the way through to every human job is going to get taken away, all the way through to, well, don't worry about any of this because AI is going to kill all humans so you won't exist anyway. <laughs> which, which, which part of the spectrum are you on? Oh, um, I'm an eternal optimistic person and the kind of role that I do in Zoho involves speaking with startups, entrepreneurs. It's a very, very agile environment where things are changing every day. That said, I fundamentally, I graduated in industrial microbiology. So I'm, I'm kind of the person where you would, you would want to know what is this human doing in a place like SAS. So you get a 360 degree view of um, who you are as an employee, what you are in relationship with, like you're a sister, you're a brother, you're a husband, and you're also an employee. And the most important aspect of each of us as citizens sometimes takes a background. So looking at all of this, um, and I get, get like the ringside view of things. It's very important um, while I be optimistic to understand that, okay, there is artificial intelligence. Um, you talk about how it's going to affect the workplace. So at Zoho, what we do is we kind of bring in a lot of conversations across hierarchy because that's fundamentally the culture where we believe that uh, though there's hierarchy, that's for enablement. Uh, so we kind of practice a flat one where we use our own SaaS tools to have a lot of collaborative and communication around this. this. And uh, some of the decisions we've made in this process that trickles down from the senior most leadership, including the CEO, is that um, we want humans to drive this, to take AI in the hands, put the human element always first, because the people at the end, we talk to our customers from diverse backgrounds that don't speak exactly the language of technology everywhere. So how we empower them without looking down upon them, how we don't um, enhance the scary story of, okay, AI is going to displace humans, we take a very conscious step every day. So one of the things we've actively done is um, we are not hiring people anymore. We are very, very strict. The CEO in, in a 20,000 uh, company every day takes initiatives to talk to senior managers on how many people we should hire and so that there are no layoffs. So, so the that very fact that you're saying don't hire too many people because there's a possibility of layoffs, layoffs. later on. Yes. And I know other companies are doing that. Yes. That does mean that there are X amount of jobs and functions that will then be done by AI. By that's right. Definition. That's right. Because Zoho ourselves, we've bought a lot of Gen AI. That's been we have an AI stack that makes a lot of human conversations redundant. That kind of enables workflows and bring more customers in. So on one spectrum, we are talking about how we how we bring in AI that can displace all of these fundamental tasks that are very redundant and monotonous. Ashley, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're looking at that broad spectrum, because mm -hmm. even if you're having conversations. It's important to at least have some perspective on where this is actually headed. Mm. Um, what is going to end up getting done by AI? Yeah. And, and you might still be prepared for that. There's no point saying, oh, it should not happen mm. because it's very possible that the genie is already out of the bottle now. 
I think so. I agree. And your optimism and positivity, I think, is really important that we don't just scare people about displacement of jobs. I guess my background is in universities and working with young people and looking at careers. And then personally, I studied history. And when we look throughout history, all technological change has been accompanied by fear and probably some displacement of jobs. I think the difference with AI is the scale and the rapidity of change is much quicker. Um, but that there's certainly a role for business to work together with governments, to work together with universities and educators to relay the fears and to ease people's kind of concerns and to make sure that not only that we're creating jobs for the future, that we know what they are and that we're looking forward, but that we also upskill current employees. Sometimes I think there's a big focus on tech sector jobs specifically, but all of us in our jobs and lives are going to be impacted by AI. It's already having a huge impact. So sometimes when I think of the future, we can't say. My very first role was in retail. As a student, the jobs that I had don't exist. They've already been mechanized. And that's probably not something I ever anticipated mm -hmm. as a teenager, that those roles within my lifetime would be redundant. So I think um, there's lots of roles that change. We have data science, we have analytics, we'll have lots of ethics of AI. AI roles, so I don't think it's all doom and gloom, but in any workforce we need to be able to prepare for change and to expect it in our careers. But you know, you're, you're absolutely right if you look at history, when tractors came, people mm -hmm. said, oh my god, it's going to displace humans, when computers came, they're going to displace mm -hmm. humans, when the internet came, but a lot of them still required, you still need humans to run the, mm -hmm. run the computers, right, or to drive the tractors. AI is the first place where there are entire segments, potentially, of jobs where you're looking and saying, all of this does not need to be done by humans now, you could have someone else doing mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. um, so fundamentally, mm -hmm. is, this, is this different to anything that we've seen before? I think it is different, very different, because I think the ability to mimic and to look at the capacity of AI to, to compete with human intelligence in a short time. So it is different, but I think in some sense we have had technological changes so much, even the internet in the last 20 or 30 years has radically changed all of our jobs um, so that we should be prepared for it. We've heard from experts who are tech experts, I'm not, I'm somebody who looks at kind of young people and careers and how, how we respond. Um, so it is different, the scale of it's different, but it's not to say that it's all going to be negative, whether you look at you know how it frees time, that people won't do mundane tasks, a lot of it, there's positive aspects, but people will still need to be able to survive and to have healthy and fulfilling careers as well. Right, you know, the, that, that's always the, the hope that you know, the mundane and the boring mm -hmm. things will be done and, you know, humans can be more creative. It's actually somewhat interesting because a lot of generative AI, AI mm -hmm. seems to be doing the creative tasks mm -hmm. even better than the mundane tasks. So therefore, you start scratching your head and worrying a little bit about, yeah. uh, about where human creativity mm -hmm. is going. But when you're looking at it either yourself or you're advising your clients, mm. which are the sort of areas that you can see saying, look, these jobs, these areas, that's under threat, mm. this less so? Absolutely, that's a great question. Um, so when, when we talk to the end customers and then there's this question of, okay, I'm automating a lot of things, at least from a startup perspective or how we talk to entrepreneurs every day, um, from the time, even in 2016, when at least in India, the word startup was overlapping a lot with uh, small and medium businesses, mom and pop stores. And now we have a lot of clarity in how things work. It's very important to understand that you bring an idea today, you think it's disruptive, you think you're going to scale globally, but there are 50 people who are doing the same thing. So what really stands out is not your AI or um, you know what you are doing, is how you're doing things. So customer delight, AI is not going to do much there. What are you going to do with the data? What are you doing going to do with the creativity? So I think the human element is always going to be leading the way. AI is not is not something that's separate separated from us, as treated as a separate entity. We are the ones who have to have the courage so that we can have the compassion, take this technology in our hands. Keep the past, you know how the impact of Industrial Revolution 2.0 and 3.0 have had, where we've, we've not even talked and recovered about the downfall of so many generations across. Now, 
Um, I think it's different because the kind of people that are part of Industrial Revolution 4.0 are very different. They put their ethics first, they think 360 degree. So I think AI is going to be in good hands that way. Mm. You, when you are advising people, you also had a background in sort of mm -hmm. where skilling is, is required in universities. Do you think we are at the point where whether whichever part of your career you are in mm -hmm. or if you're a young person going into university, you should already be thinking about that question about, okay, this is AI proof and this is not AI proof. This is where, these are areas where I will actually be benefited by AI, like prompt engineering. Here are certain things that AI will almost certainly be able to do better, so let me not go into that. Mm. Is that advice you'd be giving? I think so. I think it's very important for any discipline or any young person or somebody who's coming into their career to look at the future of work and, and to have a, um, as much as possible to be as informed. Like we can't say what's necessarily the world is going to be like in 20 years, what the skills will be. But I think keeping abreast of technological developments in AI, um, rapid kind of changes in job markets, creativity, there's lots of things that will open up as opportunities. And you mentioned ethics in particular, how, you know, the policies and governance of AI, how we respond to it. So not just the roles for people who are looking at data sets and so on. I guess one of the things that I think is really important with all of this, um, and I speak uh, as a woman, is the kind of, um, the, the, that we need, need to make sure that as developments happen, that we make sure that we don't have biases against whether it's women um, with AI and the roles of work, and that we make sure that we're kind of nuanced in our approach. But I think the ethos of lifelong learning is very important anyway. I would say even in my career, um, I've had a lot of different roles. Probably my parents didn't have as many jobs as I had. I didn't know the jobs that I've done existed when I was a student. Um, and it's not that I wasn't well researched. So I think I, we can expect the same in the future. And my advice to young people and people starting their careers would be absolutely make sure that you keep abreast and try to reskill, retrain and get all of these skills. So what is safe and what is not safe? I mean, I've and for, even as parents, you quite often have a conversation. I've had my, my son coming to me and saying, what am I doing in college? I should actually be just playing the guitar because AI is not going to be able to play guitar on a stage anytime soon. Uh, it's very tough to find an answer to that, right? And that should yeah. you be doing it or should you not? What's safe and what's not safe? It's, it's a good question. I think a, a lot of the discussion about AI and the jobs that might be redundant, it's maybe lower skilled jobs, and, you know, the higher skill, the things that we need people to think critically or creativity or soft skills, will those things will not be redundant, I don't think, soon. So I think things that are will be very important will be data science, analytics, that we have people who can interpret data um, and to different audiences, um, ethics, regulation, um, policies, how the interface between AI and humans as we work together increasingly will be very important. In terms of the kind of what universities need to consider as well, I think um, very often higher skilled um, people in economies, you know, do well and can flex. So I think the real key thing is to look at maybe lower skilled and how do we make sure that we're not displacing people and that we also make sure they have access to jobs in the future. Can I just play devil's advocate on that and you know, throw that to you as well? I mean, that's, that's certainly a possibility, but uh, it can also be said, for example, I've seen AI models that do consultancy job, which would mm -hmm. normally be considered higher skill, you know, mm -hmm. consultancy, the McKinsey sort of jobs that are also very highly paid. And I've seen AI that can do that actually really well, whereas mm -hmm. some of the more manual labor, which is considered lower skill, mm -hmm. you know, construction mm -hmm. work and the rest of it, at least right now we don't have AI or robots that mm -hmm. can actually do that very well. Maybe robots will come at some point who will be able to do it. Mm -hmm. So is that continuum really there? Or could it paradoxically be some of the higher skilled, higher paid jobs that might actually mm. be up for uh, up at risk? Okay, this, I, I don't think I can answer. I'm, I'm getting all of you now to put down mm -hmm. crystal right. balls That's and right. start I mean, yeah. th This is a lot to process because we are talking about all, all the end-to-end the -end spectrum here. Mm. But if, if I can just, you know, the sidebar, that is the most important sometimes. Um, it's very important to understand which geographical region you're talking about. And today, only now we are starting to talk about neuroelasticity and everything where all these cross-functional skills even have to come together. Someone who's so good in counseling or neuroscience has to be enabled with the right kind of technology. So I don't think the momentum is that where you, you feel very scared that you're going to pull the carpet from under your leg like overnight. But we also be prepared. One key thing that's very important to do 
when, when we put these leaders in the front, the people who have the power and privilege to tell the story of AI, are they emotionally intelligent too? Are they, are they empathetic? Are they very self-aware? Are they very socially, you know, emotionally intelligent where when they say the story, it's not fear, but it's enablement, it's empowerment. And we say, okay, together we can go a long way than taking these developed countries and AI to the next level. Mm -hmm. It's easier to go to Mars, but can we tell our children and tomato does not go on, grow on trees? So there's a lot of conversation that still needs to be had mm. this time. The emotional aspects of it, that's something which I don't think AI will struggle to do, at least has for humans. Mm. One last question from you on mm -hmm. work-life balance. Mm -hmm. Where do you see that headed going forward? Yeah, it's, um, I think, I guess we all maybe have issues with work-life balance already before AI. So I think this is something that will continue that we look at. So I think AI can potentially help and also might be a risk to our work-life balance. So I think with COVID, you know, we've had the kind of blurring of our private and work lives very much with the technological advancements and the working from home and remote work. It's also very good because we have flexibility. So I think in terms of AI, we will have flexibility, but we need to make sure that the human interface with AI and how we work in the future takes into consideration people's caring responsibilities, um, people's mental health, um, bringing up children, all of the various things that we have um, and that we don't have kind of this sense that we're always on, which has already crept in, but has the potential to, to come in more. So I think policies are very important. Um, and I think it's very important that um, governments and employers and universities work well together so that um, people can have fulfilling careers in the future and that we're not always on, that it doesn't become more intensified. Okay, work-life balance may be one of the areas that is good, where good news is coming. You'll have more time, free time. Um, I have a lot of things to say about that. I, th I think we're running out of time. But then I think it's, it's a lot of bias that we need to first address on whose job is what yeah. in order to even understand. So I believe that you need to have a work-life integration because it, there are days in my job where I don't get to do my work, but I, mm. I get done with my parent-teacher's meeting. Um, I'm part of my daughter's, uh, the next studio that she's working on. And then I go back home and I get my work done. So it really is in the hands of the enablers to understand that, okay, mm. we're doing, talking about all of this progress, but it's going to benefit whom? Who's going to be left behind? All right. Yes. All right. It uh, promises to be an exciting mm. new world. Thank you both Thank so you. much to Thank help us, too. for helping Thank us you. navigate Thank that. You.